Okay, so t we have the second full-length album from Mortuous, a uh, San Jose, California-based death metal band featuring members of Necro and uh, various other bands. And uh, Upon Distillation is... Thankfully, it's a different album. They didn't just make the second album twice, and I think that, that counts for a lot these days with modern, old-school, leaning death metal records. And... Uh, the cool thing about Mortuous is that they're very much rooted in a very specific style of North American death metal, and they have some Finnish death metal influence in there as well. But they they don't really stretch that further out into the spectrum. They're really not a progressive death metal band. They're really not like a Morbid Angel style death metal band. I'm sure they, they, they listen to Morbid Angel, but... Um, they aren't quite a death doom metal band either. In the same way that you could call certain albums from Autopsy and Incantation death doom metal, or probably the very big influences on it, but they're not really death doom metal. And uh, really, the second album has tasked the band with having their own identity beyond those comparisons. And I think they do they do a really great job of kind of finding a logical place to go with their sound, while also inserting a few cool surprises. And as it turns out, the three biggest surprises on the album end up being big death doom metal moments, which sort of contradicts what I just said, but you, you know, you'll get it more when you listen to it because they've, um, they've done exactly what a second album should do. And what I mean is, they took a look at their sound, the successes and the failures of it on their previous, the first album, and they went to extremes. They're more brutal. There are probably twice as many riffs on this album. The pace is up in general. And when it comes time to ease up on the, uh, the sort of fury of it all, they stop and they hit a doom metal moment and not one that's and a surprising one, uh, like their taste in death doom metal is not so typical. So there's a couple songs on here. Uh, the first one is Nothing. It's right at the top of the album. And it uh, has a very surreal feeling to it. And if you heard the first single, which is the last sing song on the album, you'll see what I mean. It, it, that's more of a funereal, like a funeral death doom sort of feeling. And then there's an, another song in the middle of the album that sort of checks it checks in it in the same way so it's less of a Finnish death doom sound but there's still Finnish death metal in their sound and I think some of the best parts of uh, I think it was through wilderness is that was that the name of the first album uh, what was uh, there was more of a Finnish death metal touch to the best parts of that record so that's still in there but this is closer to like a drawn and quartered in terms of intensity um, much faster, uh, much more aggressive, and leaning into the, I guess, the complexity and the arrangement of the riffs. They, they are butting them up one after another, and the effect turns out to be something more along the lines of like emulations are here and after uh, when they do it. So it's a lot of those elements colliding all at once make for an album that is a lot to take in at first. It sounds pretty standard. It, it doesn't look very standard, but when everything's in motion and you've kind of got it all in head and, and you're in your head and you've sort of listened to the album about four or five times, it sort of clicks that like this is a very brutal album compared to the last one. It's a very frustrated and angry and kind of running hot one. So I get the album artwork. That makes sense, you know. But uh, what makes it even more interesting is that there's these points of doom that they feel almost they, they feel more sad than they should. They feel off tone. They it feels like there's a uh, if an album like this could convey an overall mood and a tone, it's sort of sorrowful one minute, contemplative the next, and then just completely on fire, furious the rest of the time. Uh, getting a lot of frustration out through these really intricate strings of just 
topic, uh, increasingly less referential death metal riffs. And if you're here for the riffs, if you like death metal for the riffs, this is a good album for it. Um, I think the first one is a little bit more readably pushing, be you know, clicking between those different modes. Like, oh, that's an autopsy riff, that's an incantation riff, that's an emulation riff. You can still do some of that here, but it's not as pronounced. So I found it very entertaining. I listen to this album a lot. Um, even I don't love the album cover, so like I know that's stupid that it matters to me, but uh, it's still pretty cool. I really do love that it's so different from the first one. I feel like they've got a. I'm really feeling like this band has a personality, and whatever that means to you, all that means is that like I don't consider this a generic death metal album. The same way that I don't think that a lot of the uh, sort of Danish bands that they're sort of kicking around with are generic, the way people might ap appreciate them. Uh, it's that old school death metal influence, but they're doing their own thing. It is a modern day death metal record or two. So, yeah, I just, I thought it was a great, solid death metal album. It definitely is for the people who have more classic taste. And I say as much here at the end, where it's like, I'd primarily recommend Upon Desolation to the classic early 90s Deathheads first and foremost, because I think that's where it's coming from. Um, so uh, if you're stuck on the, the modern sort of hardcore beats and slow chug kind of death metal, this is a good transition into something that's actually quite substantial and could open doors to Death metal, which is much more rhythmically sound, more interesting, more detailed, and uh, just you can there's a physicality to this level of, of uh, brutality and aggression that is much more satisfying in the long run and has a longer shelf life. It's just as simple as it gets. This is going to stick around in my head for at least you know a few months, maybe a year, and uh, that's only because I encounter so much music. Um, so it might be a, a a pretty decent recommendation for most people into death metal in general and it's it's worth getting excited about when a band uh puts in the effort for something a little bit new a little bit crazy and uh just appreciably solid as a death metal album overall so that's where i'm at with it uh definitely you know check it out buy it whatever you want